Jacob, this is Jasmine. We got Sean, Daniel, Charles. We're from Grace Fellowship Hawaii up in Waipio. And um, Lane is out, obviously, today, and he asked if we would come and worship with you folks. We're really excited to do that. Um, thank you for having us. We picked some songs that we hope you'll know, um, and uh, we just want to invite you to join right along. We're not here to perform for you folks this morning. We're here to worship with you. We want to we worship our Savior together in song. Awesome. Well, um, we're going to have a scripture reading, I believe, and then we'll jump right in. Good morning. We're going to go ahead and do our scripture reading for today. Our scripture reading is from Ephesians 4, 25 to 5, 2. Therefore, having, not, having put away falsehood, let each one of us of you speak the truth with their neighbor. For we are members one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corruption, corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that, is, that it may give grace to those who hear, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed by the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, uh, a fragrant hovering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord.
was saved for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chain. In every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Ask Lord, glorify your name. God, would you hallow your name? Hallow your name in this place. Hallow your name in our hearts. Take us, Lord Jesus. Conform us to all that you are. In our lives. Hallow your name in our lives. We long to live set apart. We long to live set apart. Take us, Lord Jesus. Conform us to all that you are. Take us, Lord Jesus. Oh, take us, Lord Jesus. Conform us to all that you are. Humbly we come. Knowing you see all of our needs before we speak, and so we approach your throne of grace. With one request. What is it? Lord, hallow your name. Come on, some voices. Hallow your name in this place. Hallow your name in our hearts. Take us, Lord Jesus. Conform us to all that you are. Father of life. Father of life. The God of all grace. You're the first and the last. All oh, the ancient of days. I tremble before you, yes we do, I fall on my face, and all I can speak is Lord hallow your For us to all that you are. Hallow your name in our lives. Cause we long to live set apart. Take us, Lord Jesus. Conform us to all that you are. Declare this together. His is the kingdom. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That's it. That's the whole thing. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So hallelujah. Hello.
Take us, Lord Jesus, conform us to all that you are in our lives. Hallelujah, your name in our lives. We long to live set apart. Take us, Lord Jesus, conform us to Take us, yeah, take us, Lord Jesus, conform us to all that you are. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice for us on the cross that makes it possible for us to do this right now. Thank you that you've taken our sin and given us your righteousness so that we can stand before God the Father blameless. Not because of our merit, not because we've earned it. We would never deserve it in a million years. It's because of your goodness, because you did it for us. You lived the perfect life for us. Lord, we're overwhelmed by the thought of what you went through to bring us back to you. Sing how deep. And how deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretched treasure. How great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know. in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection, why should I gain from His reward, I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Yes, thank you, Jesus. never do for ourselves, Lord. Thank you, God. Your love is devoted like a 
like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today. Faithful you have been Faithful you will be, you pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You father the orphan, your kindness makes us whole, and you shoulder weakness strength becomes our own now you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name and it's why i sing your praise well Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be you will be praised with angels and saints so we sing a word Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my Lord, that's our prayer, that you would help us to praise you even when we're out of this place, even when we're done with this gathering. Lord, help us to continue our worship into the way that we live. We know that that's the type of worship you desire from us, that our lives would be conformed to the image of Jesus, that we would herald the greatness of our great king, our great conquering lion, our great sacrificial lamb who has paid the price for our sins so that we can be reunited with our God. Lord, would you honor yourself through the rest of our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May the praise of God ever be on your lips, ever be in your heart. Would you share his amazing aloha to the people right next to you? Give some aloha to the people right next to you. No, no.
Good morning. Aloha. Welcome to Kalihi Union Church. We are so glad you're here to honor and worship the Lord this day. Amen. Together as one family, we come and we love Jesus. Amen. And so if you are a guest or a visitor, you are part of our family today. Welcome to our Ohana. And so if you're a family or friend would like to recognize, now would be an appropriate time. All right. Who's in the house? This is a chance to welcome, yes, Brother John, Pastor John, who's in the house? That's a this is my sister. From, she recently graduated from the college in uh, Washington State. She's here visiting us. Uh, wow. My sister, Julie. Thanks. And whom else do we have? Right there. Yes, Eileen. Did I get the name right? I got the yes, name right. Eileen. Hi, this is uh, my brother-in-law Stephen visiting from California. Woohoo! And my sister-in-law Bev visiting from Kaimuki. Welcome, God bless. Welcome. We hope you feel loved today. Hi, this is Kayoko. She's uh, visiting us. She's our guest for a few months. Um, she's visiting from Tokyo, Japan. Hi. God bless. Oh, hi, oh. Oh, you're I'm just following, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Who else do we have here? Oh, Pastor yes. Brad, all the way in that corner. <laughs> Thanks, Pastor Brad. <laughs> Exercise for today. All right, <laughs> praise the Lord. What's your name? It's Esther. My name's Esther, and um, I'm kind of new here myself, but I have a couple of uh, guests staying with me for a few months. This is Brian, he's from Texas, mm -hmm. and this is Sebastian, and he's from Germany. All right. Wow, guten Tag, meine Freunde. Wie geht es dir? Oh. Willkommen. <laughs> All right, very good. And we have uh, our friend, uh, Donna. Just say hi to Donna. She's like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and anybody else? Uh, Kendall, we have a wonderful American... Uh, heritage. Heritage. <laughs> And Not in Christ, but also a ministry. Uh, yeah, and, and so, trail life. So we're going to invite our friends up, and they have got a short announcement, right? Woohoo! Really short. We got 20 seconds. Um, <laughs> if you are interested in American Heritage Girls as a program for young girls from kindergarten to grade 12, or Trail Life USA for the boys, same age group. Uh, we have a rally night brochure and some, some pretty basic information about the two programs. It'll be in the back of the church. There's a wonderful sign that Adeline um, had made for us, so we'll, we'll have some extras there. Great. Uh, that, was, that was actually... Rally is on 24th in two weeks. Thank you, Barry. So they have a rally coming up as well. If you're interested in our children's ministry for American Heritage Girls or Trail Life, please see George or Wendy. Please. We just had Sunday school right before this. If you're not connected to a Sunday school, get connected. We're doing a thing called Big Questions in our Sunday school. And this is a great opportunity to discover our big God who has answers to these big questions. What kind of big questions are they? So today's question yeah. was, what is backsliding? Wow, that's yeah, a big that's question. Yeah, that's a deep, it could go deeper into the things We could, go, we could like go back, we could go deep. Yeah. That's yes. all good, okay. Uh, next, we have a Bible series starting this week, yes. Yay. And it's starting on Tuesday night. And for eight weeks, I believe it's eight weeks, uh, you can come on Tuesday night at 6.30. If for some reason you cannot make a Tuesday night, you can come on Thursday. And then the next week you could come back, on, you know, you can flip-flop. So you don't have to do all of these. You've got three opportunities, Tuesday or Thursday or Wednesday morning. So if there's one night that doesn't work out, it's okay to chop and change. And we are going to have childcare on Thursday nights. If you could drop your uh, cakey off around 6.15, that would be Ono-licious. Oh, Wonderful. No, What's next? Well, I just had a highlight. 
if you've not gone to Pastor Clive's evening classes, you will be blessed by going. So be connected to one of these classes. He goes much deeper, and he teaches really excellently. Well, what we also have next is um, we are in, on your calendar. Mark the 30, 30th of every month. We have 24-hour prayer. I was getting that mixed up. So on the 30th of every month, 24-hour prayer, mark that on your calendar. Also mark every fourth Sunday of every month. We have a thing called Connecting Point in which you could ask questions, get to know the pastoral staff and elders, mm -hmm. and ask anything about KUC. All right. And just to say about Connecting Point, things happen fast here. Things happen quickly. This is a time for you to come and be with us. And there's food. And you can ask questions. So we'll be here for you. And we do this pretty much, I think, every month. Every fourth. And because we know there's lots of questions. And we want to be a part of your lives as you are of us. We also have a conference coming up. And the women of KUC, I believe it's just for the women, uh, Robin Jones Gunn is the best-selling award-winning Christian author. She's written over 100 books. How do you write 100 books? Um, Anyway, she's written a series that's for teen girls. There's all kinds of information. Uh, Robin will be speaking at a women's event right here at KUC, August 18th. Uh, the Times, uh, all of that wonderful information for you ladies is at the back. So you can sign up. And I think, is that it for today? You could get, look in your bulletins for other things to pray for or other things that we're involved in here at KUC. Pastor Brad? We just wanted to communicate about our keiki, our children. And uh, we have set up a new system in terms of their safety and security so that we can have them checked in. So we have two times for checking in. For before Sunday school, there's a time that they check in at uh, 8.45 to 9 a.m. And then there's also another time before their children's church, which is at 10.30 to 10.45. And so parents, We'll be checking them in at the B building, so if straight back here on my left, your right, uh, that building on that side there is the downstairs where they were going to be checking in all children during that time. And so right now, that's where they are. Uh, sometimes you see them in here. They're going to be here once a month, and we bless them. We bless the children, and they, we send them off. But for security purposes at this time, we just want to make sure that they're safe. They don't have to be moved back and forth a whole lot. And so we just check them in there, and then they stay there during this time for children's church, okay, so that we can continue our worship here. And so at this time, we do want to pray for them, mm -hmm. as well as we want to pray for our offering. And so we're going to invite the uh, worship team to come up uh, at this time right now, mm -hmm. and then we're also going to invite the ushers to come forward, and we're going to have our, our time of offering as well. So would you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can come and worship you freely. God, we pray, Father, for our children. We pray, God, that you will stir in their hearts a desire to worship you, a desire to long for a relationship with you. God, for many of them, Lord, this might be something where they have to come, maybe because of family that comes here. But God, we pray that Somehow, Lord, you would stir in their hearts, God, uh, on their own, a desire to really love you and to worship you and to want the things of God and see the blessings of God in their lives. So, Father, we pray for them. We pray your blessing upon them. We pray for all the teachers and all the leaders, God, that's there and watching over them. Mm -hmm. We pray your, just your hand upon each one of them. Mm -hmm. And right now also, Father, we just pray for our offering. We ask, Lord, that you would bless it. We ask, Lord, that you would use it to further your kingdom. God, that many, many more uh, souls would come into the kingdom of God. Lord, that we long to see each one someday united together, worshiping you, God, our Lord and King. So we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And we just wanted to say today that if you're new with us, uh, we pass out these bowls. Uh, I think they're called bowls. And um, when they come to you from your neighbor, don't feel obliged to give. But we can give, right? And so if uh, God is speaking to your heart today, it's okay to give. So pass out the bowls, please. Pass them to your neighbor. Don't feel embarrassed, please don't. 
It's okay to pass them on. But as the Lord works with you and loves you, give from your heart in Jesus' name. seated. Bear your cross as we wait for the crown. Wow. These brothers and sisters of ours, 
uh, pick the songs, bear your cross as we wait for the crown. That could just not be more perfect for today's message. Welcome to Kalihi Union Church. This is the house of the Lord, amen? It's good to see you. Woo! Something's happening. Something's happening, right? Jesus is at work. Something's happening. Bear your cross as we wait for the crown. If you are new to being in this building, it may feel a tad bit strange, okay? We felt that too when we first came into church. We want you to feel warm and welcome. And when you come on Sunday mornings, either at 7.15 or 10.45, please know that we want to love you, either through donuts and coffee (laughs) or just our warm embraces. And we do. We have a time of singing songs. We have a time of reading scripture. We have a time of making announcements where we share what is going on in our community. And plus we have this time where we hopefully listen to the Lord's word. For it is God who needs to speak. And I have a conviction that comes from the Bible that comes from Genesis. The, not Genesis, Kima, our friend in the back there. <laughs> but from the Bible book, Genesis, where God speaks first. God speaks first in the beginning, right? And I think that says something to us, that God speaks first and we then should listen. Amen? So my conviction on Sunday mornings is this. While I do not think of myself as a preacher, and some of you may say, yeah, that's right, you're (laughs) no preacher. I do have a conviction that God needs to speak first. And that's what happens on Sunday morning. And that's why we come, so that we can hear, hopefully, God speak first. And it really is up to me and the other pastors to listen to God during the week, over and over again, to hear, what do you want to say, Lord? because he has chosen to use us, mortal individuals, to speak his word. If you can find a Bible in front of you, or even just peek over to your friend's Bible, we're going to look at this epistle, another fancy word, if you will. That's a letter. It means letter, an epistle. And it's the first epistle of John. Not the Gospel of John, but the first epistle of John. It's a very short letter, if you will. And we've been studying this and reviewing this in this time for about 30 or so minutes. And we pray that you too will be able to read that. Now, if you have the Bible in, we call these pews, page 1900. So I'm going to try and find 1900. And then we shall all be on the same page. Wonderful. Now, the whole series that we're looking at here, we're giving it uh, a title uh, for you to understand this book, and the title we've given is Fellowship in the Light of God's Life-Giving Love. Fellowship in the Light of God's Life-Giving Love. And this is our third week together, and our goal on page 1900, can you all look down upon that? show your friends. We're going to pick it up at verse 28. And those little numbers there are to help you. 28. And you can see it says, God's children and sin. And you may think, what? God's children and sin? What does the Lord want to say to us about that? Well, hopefully we will encounter that today. Now, this particular passage, I believe, is the fellowship of abiding in love. And as we read these verses from verse 28 through to the end of chapter 3, I hope that you will feel the sense of abiding in love or to live in love. And I believe that John, the apostle, can speak well on this because John had an experience of Jesus. And what was the nature of that experience? Jesus loved him. So how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son. And John experienced that, and that experience really poured out in a testimony. Because once you've experienced something, it does become your testimony, right? If you don't have experience of something, how can you really have a testimony? But it doesn't just stop there. John actually proclaims it. He tells it to other people. 
because it's too good to keep to himself. And the purpose for that is joy, that he wants others to have that joy. Now, as we've been reading in the first book or first epistle of John, we understand three important points from John. And the first one is that God is light. God is light. Now, during the week, you've probably experienced a lot of darkness, right? I hope that you've experienced God is light. Because God is light, and in Him, there is no darkness at all. Not only is God is light, but we are God's people. So who's the we? Who's the we that are God's people? That is anybody who professes Jesus as Lord and Savior. Professors? We proclaim that he is Lord and Savior. So if you feel comfortable, you can shout out, My Lord and Savior! My Lord and Savior! Wow! God's people! Now that may be a journey for some of you that you're not quite there yet because you still haven't understood yet who God is. And we hope that you can continue to come back here and learn more of who God is. And we can start with this, God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. And he wants to take us to a place where we're his people. The third point that John makes is that we are anointed. Anointed. We may think of anointing uh, in terms of oil. There's an anointing of oil that sometimes people put on others, and it symbolizes something. In the Old Testament book of the Bible, they actually took utensils and anointed them for special purposes, using oil. It had a cleansing effect, and there was a symbolism to it. I think as much as that we can engage with Jesus, by the way, how many of you saw The Passion of the Christ, the movie? Right, quite a few saw that movie. So you can experience Jesus in that way. You can experience Jesus in that way, through a movie, through fellowship, through the hearing of, of other people. But it really does take the Holy Spirit to actually bring you to life. The funny thing is you don't really experience it until you experience it. So it may seem awfully strange to you, and it certainly did to me, before I became a Christian, what is all this Holy Spirit, anointing, Jesus, what is all of that? But once I sensed God's love for me, and once he embraced me, even though I was a sinner, and once his Holy Spirit birthed me into new life, then I cried like every newborn baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what John is talking about here. We need the Spirit. And it is God's life through the Spirit. So can I just say this to you believers, okay? Because we understand that some, even here today, may not yet fully believe. Can I say this to you as believers? You are a believer because the Spirit speaks to you. I mean, He does connect with you. And that spiritual is an amazing blessing of grace that comes to us. Now, I've got this next picture here, which Brother Brad put together, and it was, we were working together, Brad, on, you know, which picture would work well for this message, and I just think Brad nailed it when he got this picture. Because don't you want to be on this path with Jesus? I mean, I do. I want to be on this path with Jesus, and I understand that I'm not yet fully where the sun is, but boy, I want to be there. But the glorious blessing is this, is that we can actually walk to the sun with Jesus along the way. And you know how that happens? We listen to the Spirit. See, as you listen to the Spirit, He'll tell you how to make that journey. Now, when you don't listen to the Spirit, here's where you will end up. You will end up off the beaten track. And many of us have done that, right? Now, in England, where I'm from... In case you thought I was from Y and I. <laughs> I know, easy mistake. In England, we call off the track the brambles. The brambles. You may call it the thorns and the thicket, but we call it the brambles. And the comment was this never amble in the bramble. Because you will get cut up and scratched, and you'll fall into potholes. But what do kids do when you go walking with them? What do, kid, what do children do, rather? What do the cakey do when you walk with them? They want to walk in the brambles, even when you tell them, don't do it. 
Walk on the path is the message really for today. Now, on this next picture, I want to show you that this black and white gray scale on the left shows a picture of a man, and he's on his own. He's isolated. He's in the black and white of life. It's kind of in the darkness. But Jesus is calling us into the light, into the full technicolor of what he offers. Now, which picture do you want to be in today? The bottom left or the top right? I mean, you have that choice. You can pick where you go. God gives you that freedom. If you want to live in the black and white of life, you can do that. But I don't know about you, but I want to live in the, the glorious technicolor. Because how many of you have black and white TVs today? Probably none of you, right? <laughs> God calls us from a, light, a life of darkness to a life of light. And let's see how that plays out as we look at these verses. So, 1 John... That's the first epistle of John, chapter 2, verse 28. And I'm learning here, folks. I'm learning. I'm on a journey like you. I don't put all the verses up now. <laughs> We're just going to put some highlight verses. And now, dear children, continue in him. That's how he refers to us, believers. We are dear children. Parents, how many of you said to your spouse, is that your child or is that my child? <laughs> But you see, here's how God refers to us. Dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his, confident, at his coming. That's a tremendous encouragement to me that we may be confident and unashamed. Now you may think, hey, this English dude who's up here, he seems pretty confident, he seems pretty unashamed. But that wasn't always the case as the youngest of three boys. And there'll be all kinds of scrapes, and I wasn't that confident. But Christ changes us. And he offers us this wonderful blessing and grace that we may be confident and unashamed. And I think the Japanese culture understands this issue of shame, and the Chinese culture, and the Philippine, you name it, whichever culture, actually we understand shame. But here's what God is offering us, that we may be confident and unashamed before him that is coming. Now, if you're living in sin, if you're living in any kind of sin, as we understand that word sin, you may not feel that confident, and you may actually feel ashamed. I want to tell you here today, from the bottom of my heart, we don't want you to feel ashamed. Not a one of you. Not a one of you. We love you here. Verse 29, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. And what he's speaking about here is a spiritual rebirth. It's to actually understand the things of the spirit more than the things of the world. So I'll say this, the loved children of God are called to abide. We're called to abide. He's calling us to abide. My mother, uh, God rest her soul, she used to call me to dinner. I'd be kicking the football against the back wall of our house, and she would shout out, Clive, dinner! Now I had a choice to ignore her. And the longer I ignored her, <laughs> the stronger the voice. <laughs> but you see, we're loved children of God, and of course I was loved by my mother. We're called to abide. It means to be with him, to be by him, and to be before him in all things living with him. Now, why should we abide in him? Why should we continue with him? Chapter 3, verse 1, and you can see it on that next page. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. I don't want to put a burden upon you. You have to continue with him, otherwise there'll be trouble. I don't want to do that. As I read the scripture over and over and over again, I see that what great love the Father has lavished on us that I want to continue with him because he loves us. How deep the Father's love for us, that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. Wonderful. Why wouldn't we want to continue with you, Lord? Why, we wouldn't, why wouldn't we want to live with you and abide with you? 
And I believe that God brings a great response in our hearts. It's not about me trying to do something. I believe that he works in me, and I see him, I see his love, and therefore I want to continue. Now, carrying on here, from here we learn this truth. And it may surprise you as you read it, You may not understand it to begin with, but let's try and ask the Holy Spirit now to teach us. Chapter 3, verse 1 continues in this way. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. And you may say, that's kind of odd because we were speaking about love and now we're speaking about the world, so why? The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Honestly, brothers and sisters, us Christians, we are a kind of weird lot to the outside world. We are. I can remember as a non-Christian going to a Bible study and feeling very weirded out. These people are strange. Especially one gentleman who called himself an evangelist. And I was thinking, you need to go to hospital for that. (laughs) I really, I knew who he was. I knew that he was five foot ten. I knew that he was Caucasian, I knew that he was older, but I didn't really know who he was. And the reason I didn't know him was because I didn't know God. That's what the scripture's saying here. And that will be the same for you, is that many people won't know who you really are, even they know how tall you are, how old you are, where you come from. See, John says here at verse 2, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been yet made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What is God saying here? Sometime in the future, right? We know that when Christ appears, sometime in the future, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. So now we have a contrast. The world doesn't recognize you as a believer. They may know that you're five foot six. They may know that you're from the Nakamura clan. They may know all of that, but they don't know you because they don't know God. But here's what we know about God, is that sometime in the future, we we will see Christ. We will see him as he is, and we will see him in others. So, if I may say this, dear sister Annette, when we get to heaven, we will recognize each other because he will be in us. We will see him as he is. So we go from a place of non-recognition where people don't really recognize who we are, and in the future, we will go to a place where we will be known. Now, how many of you feel here today that sometimes in life, you are isolated and nobody really cares about you? And it's not a great feeling, is it? When people ignore you, when they don't recognize you. But our hope is this, we will see Jesus as he is. See, our brother Eddie here, when he goes to California or Texas or to any of the places of his old life and he meets with people of the old life, they know who he is, but they really don't know who you are because they don't know God. But Eddie's out there always sharing who God is so that they will know who God is and then they will really know who Eddie is. He's a changed man. While the world doesn't recognize this, the world doesn't recognize us. But in the future, we will be recognizable. Now, people will have doubts about you now, but when Christ appears, we shall be like him resurrected and recognizable. So what do we do between now and the future? Verse 3. All who have this hope, what's our hope? We're going to be recognized in Him, fully. All who have this hope in Him will purify themselves just as He is pure. And that's our journey. As we take this journey on this path, don't amble in the brambles, but journey with him as he is pure. So from the beginning of verse 28 up to 3.3, John is saying, where the children of God abide, and the abiding Christian will be confident and unashamed. 
Why? Because we've been born of God, we're his children. Why? Because he loves us. And while the world won't truly recognize you, in the future we will be very much recognized. So this journey takes purity, but guess what happens between now and then? When we don't have purity, what do we have? Impurity, we can call it sin. So John picks it up at verse 4. Everyone who sins breaks the law. So we may say this, well, I just sinned a little bit, but the Bible is clear, right? When you sin, you're breaking the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. And that's the promise, that's the premise. Everyone who practices sin, verse 4, also practices lawlessness. So there you are, you're driving on the freeway at 65 miles an hour in a 40. (laughs) And you may think, I'm not sinning. And then the blue light comes. What do you do with the accelerator at that point? You pull off on the gas and you start hitting the brake, right? And you think, oh no, oh no, I have to pay a fine because I broke the law. But then lo and behold, that policeman goes right by you. And what is your response? Phew! I got away with it. (laughs) And back down goes the foot. (laughs) But you've sinned! (laughs) Even if you didn't get busted, you've sinned. Because the issue here isn't the breaking of the law per se, but it's you haven't been treating the environment in a safe way. So this morning, one of our sisters was actually driving here on H1, and a tour bus, beginning with the letter R, I won't mention their name, (laughs) was driving at 70 miles an hour and crashed into her. And she actually said to him, you were going too fast. And he said this, I didn't see you. (laughs) Everyone who sins breaks the law. Now, is there any good news, you might ask, child of God? Yes, there is. Read on. Verse 5, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sins. I tell you, brother and sister, this is great news because you know what? I sin, you sin. We are to be pure between now and the future, but guess what? There is one who will take away our sins. Hallelujah. And I really enjoy the fact that we have one who has no sin is doing this because I don't want a sinner taking away my sin. I want one who is righteous and what wonderful news. Oh, yes, Lord, take away our sin. Now, as a result of there being no sin in Christ, each believer who abides in Christ does not sin. So here we go. Listen up, people. Verse 6. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. Is the Spirit speaking? Let me repeat. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. Think about that. If you are not a believer in God, if you don't have any belief in God, if all of this is foreign to you, you're not living in Him, that's why you keep sinning. But if you're a believer, John is also saying no one who lives in Him keeps on sinning. And here's the issue at hand. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or what does it say? Known him. Sometimes this is what we do, brothers and sisters. We have what is called sin management. How many sin managers do we have out there? Right? Man- you're managing your sin. Oh, if only I do this, only if I do that, I'll do a little bit less of this, I'll do a little bit more of that. You're a sin manager. You're just trying to control your sin, and then when you sin, you get guilty, right? And you figure, I'm just not a very good sin manager. I fire myself. It's not about sin management. Guess what? You know that he appeared to take away your sin. No one who continues to sin has either either seen him or known him. 
Our issue isn't the management of sin. Our issue is this. We're not seeing Jesus. In practical terms, put it this way. When you sin, try to look for Jesus. And you, wait. you may say this, no way. I don't want him to see my sin. Well, live in the dark. No, don't live in the dark. Listen to the Spirit because he wants you to come to him and say, you know what, Lord, I was wrong, you're right. I want to listen to your Spirit. I was wrong, you are right. I don't need to live in sin, Lord, because you want to take it away, and that's good news. John is not teaching perfection here. He's not teaching perfection. He's not saying that you'll stop sinning and you'll never sin again. It's don't keep on sinning. And how do you stop from keep on sinning? (laughs) S-T-O-P. Stop. And how do you stop? (laughs) S-T-O-P. Stop. And then say to the Lord, I'm a sinner. I confess. And guess what he will do with that confession? He is faithful and just. He will forgive you your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We have the privilege of living without sin. Sin can be forgiven. Sin can be cleansed. There is a contrast. I hope you see the sin-free abiding children of God in contrast to the lawless, godless sinner. We have to paint it in this way because that's how John paints it. When you sin, you are lawless. But a child of God can be sin-free. And how do you be sin-free? Confess your sin. You keep coming back and confessing your sin. Because we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who is the righteous one. He's not saying go out and sin. He's saying keep confessing. Now, I'd like to show you some photographs from India where my wife and I, where we did some mission work. And that is me, about 30 pounds lighter. And I'm on a pathway here with some goats. And the goats are in the back, not not in the front. And you have to stay on the path. And by the way, that is a UH shirt, because wherever we go, UH is near and dear to us. You have to stay on the path. Next slide. Because it's very dangerous off the path. So I don't know how many of you have taken the Heaven's Trail here, which apparently you're not supposed to do, but you don't want to step off the path, right? Next slide. And this is Maya, my wife. That's a really steep drop off that edge. So you definitely want to stay on the path. And I was praying, oh Lord, let that horse be Christian. (laughs) (laughs) Now here's what happens in life. Storms come in. And again, this was in India where we were, and they come in really fast. So you're on the path with God, but guess what happens? Just when all is perfect and you have your chai latte or you have your double mocha or whatever it is and everything's perfect, a storm will come in, right? And it happens really quickly. Stay on the path. Now here's what happens when you don't stay on the path. This is my wife. So this is a road and you may be able to see a car up in the top right hand side. There's a car there, but I told my wife, let's go down here. I took her off the main road. And this is the goat path. And it's a lot quicker. And that's like sin, isn't it? It's just a lot quicker. We don't want to stay on the path. And God bless my wife, she sinned with me as we went (laughs) off the path. But it does illustrate the whole point here. Now, if I recollect, my wife did say something to me after I took her down the path. But she did forgive me as well, so... Thank you for that, Lord. Now, let's just keep that slide up here for a second, but look at verse 7. Dear children, don't let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil. 
because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to, this is good news by the way, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they've been born of God. This is how we know the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. So three points I'll take from this. Number one, don't let anyone lead you astray. So do you have friends out there who are leading you astray? I don't know what the nature of that is. It could be, let's not go there today. Instead, let's do this. That's a leading astray, right? Don't let anyone lead you astray. Stay on the path. How do you do that? You listen to the Spirit. But the good news here is the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So you're not on your own. And when you think that person who's leading you astray is just going to get the upper hand, guess what? God is stronger. He will destroy the devil's work. Verse 9, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. So take hope. We have a wonderful advocate who pleads our cause. Now there's a warning. There is a warning. And brothers and sisters, we do need to understand this warning. There are false teachings out there. And guess what? You can go to the internet, onto TV, there's all kinds of false teachings out there. But they essentially come down to this. It's either love and righteousness or lawlessness and hate. John is warning you, stay on God's path. Now as much as he gives a warning, he also gives a reminder of true doctrine. And the true doctrine is this, at verse 11. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. So the reminder of true doctrine is this. It's a reminder of true doctrine, love one another. I don't think you can say enough to each other in your Ohana groups. So we have family groups here where you can meet. We encourage you to join those. Family groups, smaller groups. And I encourage you to keep saying in those family groups, hey, it's good to love you. It's good to love you too. Let's love one another. Because it's a message we heard from the beginning. And it's a simple message, isn't it? Now, you may say this, hey, you don't know my brother. (laughs) Or you don't know my sister. Or you don't know my cousin. But John does speak about a pair of brothers, Cain and Abel. How many of you have heard of Cain and Abel? No, they're two brothers in the first book of the Bible. They lived with God. And what did Cain do? He killed his brother. And here's what John says at verse 12. Don't be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his actions were evil. And listen up. His brothers were righteous. Now, do you get what we're saying here this morning? Remember I said earlier on this, the world won't recognize you. They won't. They may know you're five foot eight and blonde and handsome. Abel was righteous. Cain couldn't recognize him. It was worse than that. He didn't want to recognize him because he wanted his own issues. People don't care about you. We live in a world, unfortunately, brothers and sisters, we live in a world of hate. So, do you younger folks say this, just keeping it real? I mean, do you say that? We do live in a world of hate, but we're called to love in this world of hate. Verse 13, Don't be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. Because when they're trying to lead you astray, and you're saying, no, I cannot do that, you'll get a little pushback, right? Who are you? Don't be surprised if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. 
That's good news, isn't it? Let me, can I just say that one more time? We have passed from death to life. Because we love each other. I hope that affirmation sings in your heart all day long. I've passed from death to life. I'm getting all these outside forces, Lord, trying to get me to do this, to return to my old ways. But you know what, Lord? I've passed from death to life. Why would I want to go back? Why would I want to go back? Because your love has been so bestowed upon me in lavish ways that you call me your child. Honestly, God, why would I go back? And that's a different story than this. I can't do it. Nobody knows. Great love has been lavished on us. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Then the good news. Because believe me, in our hearts, right? Can I just say this? In our hearts. Don't we murder people in our hearts? And the world said no. <laughs> we do. In our hearts, we murder people, especially on H1. <laughs> it's an issue of the heart. and So you may feel even the physical aspect of murder, but Jesus goes deeper. But here's Jesus' response to all of this. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And so then, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. I think that's an opportunity. I think that's an opportunity to lay down your life for someone else isn't a have to do or an obligation, but it's a blessing. Now, he gives a practical example here. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Good question. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truths. So three parts that we can take from this. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. We've passed from death to life. We know what love is. Christ laid his life down for us. Verse 19. John will continue this message of staying on the path. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. What are you going to be able to do? Set your heart at rest. You'll have that confidence which John spoke about earlier on. Great comfort to know you belong to the truth. The world says you're not of the truth. But that's not what God says. So where do you get your power from? Not from yourself. I believe that the power of our being comes from the truth. So it all starts with Jesus. The problem I have is I don't always start with Jesus. I start somewhere else. But it doesn't start with me. It starts with the Lord. He is the source. Now there's two ways this is played out in verses 20 and 21. Let, if our hearts condemn us, so you don't need to raise your hands at this moment. Maybe you can just raise your spiritual hand. Right now, is your heart condemning you? I'm a sinner. If your heart is condemning you, here's what John is saying. We know that God is greater than our hearts. That's awesome, isn't it? because I have my own self-recrimination, but he is greater than that, and he knows everything. So as my heart condemns me, and I know that God is greater than my heart, here's what I can do, I can confess. Because he knows everything. It's not like a surprise to him when I say to God, I didn't treat my wife very well this morning. He's like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> so I can confess that. Now, once it's been confessed, what does God do? He cleanses it and forgives us. So at that point, we can say this. If our hearts do not condemn us, if our hearts do not condemn us, which has happened after you've confessed, then you can have confidence before God. And I want you to have that confidence. Then you can receive from him anything you ask because you keep his command and do what is pleasing to him. Loved ones, I hope you're reassured. 
I mean, whether you feel condemned or whether you feel I've, I've cleansed, I've confessed, I'm living a life that is moving towards purity, God is giving you reassurance this morning. We know that we belong to the truth. Our hearts are at rest in his presence. And I really do pray this for all of you here, that this will be part of who you feel in this community. That your heart this morning will be at rest in his presence. Verse 23 and 24 as we finish. This is a whole chapter that we've been through. And I encourage you to read more of the Bible, not less. To read more of it, to understand the full story. Verse 23 and 24, this is his command to believe in the name of his Son. Now I want to call the worship team up again just to say thank you from our brothers and sisters at Grace Fellowship. We love you so much. Come on up. And just to share these words, this is his command at verse 23, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. So may I give this practical commentary, a pastoral insight for you. Here's what happens. You're on the path, everything's going well. You're on the path, you're listening to the Spirit, then the storms come in. Somebody on H1 cuts you up. And your anger boils up. And at that point, you can either listen to the Spirit or not. You can either listen to the Spirit or not. I would say this, Holy Spirit, come and help me believe again. Help me believe again in the name of your Son, even though I've been cut up. Or it could be at work that someone has upset you. Just ask the Spirit, Spirit, come again and help me believe again in the name of Jesus Christ, even in this moment of anger. And then help me do this. Help me love that person who cut me up. Help me love that person who did something to me at work. Help me love my parent who's doing this to me. <laughs> and help me love my child who's doing this to me. Because God has commanded this, amen. There is a call, a continuous call to believe in the name of Jesus. Every day, brother and sister, we need to believe in the name of Jesus. Amen? Because once you start believing in him, guess who you're believing in? Something else. Yeah, ambling in the brambles. And I say this, listen to the Spirit and love one another. Because at verse 24, this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gives us. And that is the fellowship of abiding in love. Lord, we need you. We're going to hear a testimony after this song from our trip that went to Kauai. And then we're going to call up Patty Koontz, who's going to pray for us as a family. And you'll have an opportunity at the end of this service to come up here and be prayed for. Patty and others will, will be here for you to pray. Because if your heart condemns you at this time, please know you're loved. And you can confess in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more, yeah, where grace is found, is where you are. Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. And Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my right. You're my hope and stay. Thank you, Jesus. To rise to you. When temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. seated. Each of us needs Jesus Christ as a part of our lives, the essential part of our lives. I want to invite the Kauai team, those who went to Kauai. July 25th to August 1st, this church sent a delegation of 16 people from Oahu to go to Kauai. We share our testimonies now at the end because it's a reminder for each of us to be commissioned to go. So as we go out these doors, we're reminded that we're not just listening to a message. We are being obedient to whatever God calls us to do. And so whatever God has prompted in your heart this day, may you be commissioned to go. And this is but just a testimony of God's goodness unto us. We as a quiet team, and I include all of us, are grateful, especially the hands and feet, those who are able to go to Kauai. We are grateful for you as a church for being the support, for being the prayer, for being the encouragement, for giving unto this team to be able to be the hands and feet. But nonetheless, each of you are a part of the team. And we continue, praise the Lord, we continue to serve the Lord in whatever he calls us to do. Joanna, hi, my wife, made this short video of a testimony of what we did. And so let's watch this video.
praise the Lord. So primarily, it was a youth camp to at-risk kids on Kauai. We also served in a homeless ministry and helped a Christian school up on Kauai. But you notice the last picture. Um, that was a 10-year-old boy, and he wrote in this journal. In fact, we had this snack shop. And in the snack shop, we sold different items. And one of them was this journal. And it was actually a very girly journal, pink with flowers on it. But he wanted this journal. And so he took this journal, he bought this journal. And at the end, his mom, the last day of camp, the day after camp, rather, the mom sent the picture of this boy. And this boy has gone through so much in life, probably more than a lot of us have faced and has witnessed in his personal life. And he wrote on it. We just summarized it. But one of the lines he shared was, my life is hard, but we follow Jesus' path. And this is a 10-year-old who God has commissioned just as much as he is commissioning us to live for him all the way. I'm going to invite Patty to come on up. And as Patty comes, she's going to share about prayer. And prayer is essential. If you need prayer, we want to pray for you. And so, Patty, how do we do this when people come up? Um, basically, we just want to share your burdens. It was so cool because this morning when I was laying in bed and I was thinking, okay, Lord, I just want to make sure that I can express to, the, to our family what you want. And they picked it out great because the one song about coming to the altar and trading your sorrows for joys, and all, that's exactly what he was speaking to me this morning, that you don't have to leave this place the same as when you came in. And you're not alone in this. This walk that we're on, for us to be able to stay on the path and not go in the brambles, we need help. You know, like, like he, when, when Pastor said this morning about our kids, you know, when the kids are going in the brambles, what do you do? You reach out and grab them. Well, that's what we're here for. We're here to reach out and grab you so that you can continue to stay on that path with the Lord. So will you go with me to the, to the throne of grace this morning as we bring some needs to the, to the Lord? Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you and praise you so much for all that you do for us. You are such an awesome God and there is none other than you. And how sweet is the name of Jesus that we can come and he can hear and all of our cares are carried away by him. Father, we want to come before you this morning and lift up our family to you. Lord, I know that there are people in our church that are hurting. They have a hole because they've lost someone. Lord, will you go in, Holy Spirit, and fill that hole like none other can and bring your peace and comfort. There are some that are hurting because in their physical body, they are just in pain. Father, you are the one that created him, or created them. You, Lord, are the healer, and we're asking that you make them better than before. That's what restoration is. We're praying restoration over them right now. We're praying for those who need a financial break, Lord. They need a job. They need a better job. They need promotions, raises, whatever it is. You're Jehovah Jireh. You provide it, Lord. Open those doors. Open the window of heaven and pour out blessings on your people. Father, we want to come before you this morning, each one of us, and say, search our hearts, God. Is there anything in there that is not of you? Because we want to stay on the path that you have made for us. And, Father, we want to lift up our military and thank you for every one of them. Lord, whether they are here or abroad, whether they are retired or active, Father, bless them for their willingness to serve. Bless their families, Lord, for their willingness to give them to us, to protect us. Lord, I pray that our, our government would seek your wisdom in dealing with things of this day and this age, Father. We're asking that you make America great again, Lord, and you bring your presence because that is what we desire, is the presence of God to reign across this nation and this world. Lord, pour out your presence, pour out your spirit, and Lord, may you be glorified in all that we say and do today and throughout this week. Bless us, Father, for you are our Father. We are your children. We're the, we're the children of the King. I mean, we are privileged. May we May we really realize who we are in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that precious, precious assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Once again, if you would like prayer, join us in the front. There will be several people who could pray with you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. God bless you. Have a great day.